Oh boy. All right, everybody. We are preparing for the interview. Um, giving everybody time to come in. You guys know we come in five minutes before. Guys, tonight, please don't hold me liable for what comes out of my interviewee's mouth tonight. So um please don't. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. So just everybody, uh, we just gonna she's gonna be quiet for the next four minutes, give everybody time to come in. But um no, y'all pray for me, please. <laughs> pray tonight. It's my little sister, you know, and she is y'all know how sisters do, and I'm just I'm, I'm scared. You should be very scared, Nate. Scared. <laughs> no, nah, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be good. You don't believe me? Okay. I believe you. Guys, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. It's another Monday night. 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 I bet you don't have this fun with uh, all of your interviewers. I bet you some of them are boring. You're live. I know. <laughs> I win. I think me and Joy will probably be your most entertaining. No. <laughs> no. Nate, if nobody gets on here, I'm going to laugh. You do you do know you're live, right? Yes, I know that I'm live. Okay. <laughs> I told you that guys, he's not responsible for whatever comes out of my mouth. Nate knows I have a righteous side. And I have a fun side and a professional side where it sounds like I come from Harvard University. I'm about to end this interview right now. <laughs> you know what? No, nah, it's going to be cool. I just like to have fun. I think we should. I'm going to get Caleb on you. He's not going to do anything but come and love Auntie Gina to pieces. She's camera ready though. Look at that. <laughs> kind of slight beat. <laughs> I made a mistake tonight. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I pray. You know it would be funny if my doorbell rung. Or somebody's heating up something in the microwave. Well, you're home. It's live. You're right. You are so right. So, just as long as you don't get up in the middle of the interview and answer the door, you're good. Oh, I can't do that? No. But what if it's important? Uh, they come back. Oh, wow. I love how easy that is. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be cool, Nick. Yeah, I'm really excited to give some vital information to people. What is that? That look like your head. It's Iron Man. Oh, that must be Caleb's. Yes. We're having a whole conversation. Yes, that's good. Live. Guys, I deal with this on a daily basis. Every day. Every day. Every day. At work, off work, on the phone. Right. You know, hey, Lindsay. <coughs> yeah, so one minute, people are starting to come in. Guys, we thank you. We're going to get started in 60 seconds. Again, disclaimer, please. Don't hold me accountable for this interview tonight. Hold him accountable, guys. No, guys, we're just going to have fun. Uh, love how my beautiful wife is on. Hey, baby. No, don't watch him off, Gina. Don't say nothing. I know what you're about to say. We like Keisha better than you. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Guys, he knows I tell him that all the time. All right. It is 8 o'clock. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's another Monday night and time for another Father's Authority. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, I always let everybody know Father's Authority is a part of Kingdom Relationship, which is a relationship ministry my wife and I started um, to help people build Kingdom Relationships in the areas of ministry, work, life, marriage, dating, and parenting. And the Father's Authority is a part of that parenting piece. And my goal with this is to 
change the narrative on fatherhood and fatherlessness and try to get fathers back interacting with their children and help men to stay in the lives of their children. A lot of you know my story. I grew up without a father, but I had father figures in my life. So what I'm doing is I've been interviewing different fathers about fatherhood, but then the Lord told me to interview some daughters for, about fatherhood from a daughter's perspective, because a lot of times we talk about fathers and sons, and I have a son, um, but we don't hear about fatherhood from the children, especially from the daughters. And fatherhood, fathers in the lives of their daughters are very crucial um, to how the daughter grows up, how type of woman she becomes, and the type of man she marries. A lot of times we think that raising a daughter is left to the mother, and the, the mother is vitally important in raising a daughter, which she is. But the father is more important because of the father's words and his words shape her life. So tonight I have a good friend of mine I've been knowing since she was 12. Um, she's like a sister to me. Um, you guys can say my sister because she's like a sister to me. Uh, we've been through everything together, ups, downs, in-betweens. You know, she knew me before I got married <coughs> and became a father. And she knows me now. And um but welcome my sister guys tonight, Gina Karee. Hi guys. She is, uh, we're gonna talk about fathers from a daughter's perspective. So guys, I'm putting, I put disclaimer out before, but disclaimer <laughs> out now. Gina, she, we just, when we get together, it's just, it's a totally different conversation. So Fine. if she says anything crazy, charge to her head, not her heart. But Gina, <laughs> hey, baby, thank you for coming on tonight. I You're appreciate so you being here. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and your life with, tell us about yourself first, then we're going to about fatherhood. Well, hey, y'all. Hey, Hello. I am Gina Curry. Um, Some people know me as Gina Sawyer, but I go by my first and middle name, Gina Curry. Um, I am 32 years old and I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I was living in, I lived in Virginia my entire life in the Hampton Roads area. And then the Lord had instructed me to move to Atlanta. Um, uh, people that know me, if you don't, um, now you would know. Um, I danced professionally for years. And then um, I was, I, I sing. <laughs> and um, I moved here to work in entertainment. I was very happy and able to uh, be an entertainment agent to um professional dancers that you see on TV every single day, whether it's the Grammys, BET Awards, MTV. So um, I worked in entertainment for a while and then I transitioned to property management. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm just out here living my best life and just following the steps of the Lord. You ain't grown. Um, I'm grown now, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grown. I always mess with us. I got my own place now. I'm real grown. <laughs> so, you know, tell us about your life um, growing up with your dad. I know your dad. That's my buddy. Um, tell us about your life growing up with your father. So, guys, I'm Honest John. All right. So, um, growing up, with, I did grow up with the dad in the household, two parent household. Great. Um, but me and my dad, of course, you know, when you're a little adolescent, you automatically gravitate to your parents, right? Um, yeah. As the years um, <clears throat> went on, me and my dad, we, of course, we all resided in the same household, but honestly, we didn't have the best of a relationship for a while. Um, and, you know, that's because of some, you know, different family issues or whatnot. Um, so my dad is definitely known as he is the fun person, loving person, but he was always just the provider. You know what I'm saying? As every man should be, that that's what your mindset is as a guy, like with that, you want a family, you know, you're, you're built to be a provider. And to be honest, there was a lot of times I didn't really see my dad at all. It's like, it's crazy how you grow up in a two parent household, but it still feels like you're in a single parent household. So my dad worked all the time, worked constantly, and we didn't see him, you know, all, we didn't really see him a whole lot. So it really, um, it kind of put a rift in our relationship, me and my brothers. And um, it, it's important that 
a father is there at all times, especially as a little girl growing up. Um, I just didn't see him all the time. But you know what? It, that's completely understandable. However, um, as the years went by, the cool thing is, as I got older, I was able to really talk to my dad and be truthful with him and mend those things that had happened. Um, a lot of people don't know that, you know, my father became really sick. Um, he dealt with diabetes. He's had foot amputation, everything you can think of. And I'm not saying that God does makes you sick to teach you things. I definitely don't believe in that. However, I do believe in those moments where you're down, you're very vulnerable, especially for a man. Mm -hmm. God was able to really speak to him about a lot of things as far as how he raised me and my brother and the things that, you know, he did that weren't right. You know, he's human. And, but at that time, you don't really think that that's a human thing. It's kind of like you judge him. And I had to take a step back and be grown and say, Hey, you know what? I made a lot of mistakes. There are some things I could have done to communicate with my dad. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't because I was being proper and I was mad at him. But the great thing is that God really healed his heart um, he ended up getting really close to the father and then we were able to talk about everything and he's like my best friend now. So that's it's kind of like God is redeeming those years that were lost. That's good. That's good. So what are some ways um, your father impacted you as a woman? Things that now that your father may have taught you or may have done and um, that impacted you to your life now as a woman? One of the things my dad has always pumped into me is to have a work ethic. I don't care if you are a woman. I don't care if you're a dude. One thing he taught me as far as being a woman is to have your own before you get married. And when I tell you that has been one of the most valuable things he has always taught me, you know, we that there's a lot of women that have these expectations as far as getting married. Yes, a man is supposed to provide for you. However, it's okay to be a woman and to have your own and to be really independent and to have your stuff before God sends you that husband and to be whole. He mm -hmm. definitely taught me that. He pumped into me to have a work ethic, to be independent. And he also taught me not to settle for okay. anything in my life. He has always taught me that whether it be a job a career, a man, that is something that my dad has always taught us. He always used to say something to me. He said, Gina, this is just an example. Um, he was like, don't marry a guy unless he has a million dollars in the bank. He always used to say that. And I was like, well, and my mom's like, you don't have a million dollars, so why are you telling me that? <laughs> but, but what he was saying is, don't settle for a guy who cannot fully provide for you and be there for you with everything. He was like, other than that, you're going to get into a situation where you're going to pretty much be single inside of your marriage. And that is something he has always taught me. So he instilled in me to never settle and to have a great work ethic. That's good. That's good. I don't know about your work ethic, but. Ah, yeah. you a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I work like a Jamaican child. <laughs> Girl, you work like four Jamaican. <laughs> so um, what does fatherhood mean to you? So that's a whole sermon. Um, when I when I was looking at the questions you had sent me, um, I had sat there and thought, what does I read the question, what does fatherhood mean? And I think fatherhood means intentionality. Um okay. to be very intentional about being in your kids, like being there through every single thing, making sacrifices to really be with your kids. Don't get caught up in the, I have to, yes, of course, provide and work, but don't make it your whole entire life that you miss out on valuable times of your kids' lives because every little girl needs their father. I don't think people really realize how not having a father can affect your purpose later on mm -hmm. in life. It affects your decision-making. It affects... Um, it affects everything. It affects the men that you choose to be in your life when you don't have a dad. And I see a lot now. It's like um, it's a lot of single parent households now. And there are times I see a lot of a lot of fathers are not really taking time to be with their kids. Um and that is just not a good thing. It's, and it, just like you say, it's something about with a daughter. A daughter really needs her father 
like crazy. We need that affirmation from my dad. So I just think being very intentional, intentionality is fatherhood, being intentional about every single little detail of our lives, just complimenting us and loving us and telling us how beautiful we are. That even when you're three years old and you keep pumping that into your child, that affects you when you're 32. And it definitely had an effect on me because there were some things that I didn't hear. And thank God, you know, God does everything so perfect. You know, some of the things my dad couldn't give me, he provided another father, which was Pastor Warren. Love you, Dad. Um, Pastor Warren, he definitely instilled a lot of stuff in me as far as spiritual stuff that my dad didn't have because he didn't Mm -hmm. get. And that's okay. So, um, yeah, intentionality, being there for every little single detail. Yeah, and it's that that's important. And one of the things um uh you said is you have to be intentional about like me with Caleb. I'm intentional about the time I spend with him. Yeah. I'm intentional about when I come home, if it's five minutes, like when I come home before I do these interviews, at least 30 minutes of my time goes to him. Because I started the interviews, I started doing them at seven. But I pushed him back to eight after my hours at work changed so yeah. I can make sure that he has time for me. Because the first time, the first night where well, I didn't change it, but I got work at six, I got home and he didn't get any time with me. It really oh. bothered him. Wow. So now I moved him up to eight. So when I come home, I, if I wanted to spend an hour with him, I can. So because he, he needs to get a time. And so like tonight, I got off work late. But I spent at least I spent like 15 minutes in the floor playing with yes. him. It's intentional that, you know, even on the weekends when I'm off, if it, before I do anything, I make sure is anything I'm doing with Caleb. Does Caleb need anything? Does my wife need anything? Does family need anything? And I do that. And I, I learned that from uh, I also I learned that from Pastor Warren as well. Yeah. You know, to Pastor Warren. Um, but, you know, how he, you know, made sure he spent time with his family with Joy and Tay. You know how they had family nights. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that that's one that's the person I learned that from. You know, having that time, make sure you have family time with your kids. But it's important because we um we have to our kids have to see that they are important to us more than making money. Because if we yeah. spend all our time making money, we miss out on so much with them. And yeah. you know, you can uh give up. I've turned down, you know, my background is fast food management. I can go out there, get a fast food job, make plenty of money. Right. But I, I'd say, no, my family needs, my son needs. If I go, I'm not going to have time to spend with him. I'm never going to see him. So we have to be, as fathers, we have to be willing to sacrifice our time. We have to be able to sacrifice time for our children to make sure that they have the yeah. time that they need and time with us. And I love one thing you said that even when you come home, even if it's 10 minutes, Yep. Still spend time with Caleb. It doesn't have to be five hours or an entire day. We understand that you have things to do. People have lives and you have to work. That 10 minutes could change my life for something that's going to help me yep. ahead of time. So, yes, you're so right, guys. I don't care if it's five minutes. That intentional time, it just shows how much you really love someone. If it's just five or 10, 15 minutes, that's so rare. And I love that. That's really good. Yeah, I had uh, one of my interviews. I don't remember exactly who it was. Um, I think it was Pastor Lofton. Uh, we were talking, and he said, the most important thing to your children is T-I-M-E. <laughs> time. That's the most important thing there because you yeah. can, it, like you said, five minutes to them could mean the world in a situation. Now, even if you had to come, like you're on a lunch break, you got to come home and talk to your child as they even when they get older, five minutes can can make or break their life or how they feel yeah. about things. And that's so important. Um, so what's the best part of having a father as a daughter? What's the best part of having a father? If you have a good relationship with your father, you can go to him for anything, especially when it's those um hard moments of things that you don't know. Like there's a certain things that uh, the, there's a certain wisdom and knowledge that fathers have that you can't really get from your mom. Just as instance, it can be practical stuff like stuff with my car, 
um, stuff with benefits for my job if I don't understand certain <laughs> things. Let's be real. You know what I'm saying? And then if I need a little help out of dare leave, like, Daddy, can I get <laughs> Just <laughs> being honest, being a girl. But, right. um, no, there are certain things that you you can't get from your mom because I go ask my mom. So she's like, child, let me go talk to your daddy because he know that more than me. But, you know, it's that healthy balance with everything. Dad knows about the hardcore stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you can go talk to your dad about how guys are. And I'm saying that because I'm 32 and, you know, I'm in the dating world. And um, you can go talk to him and get their opinion. Shut your mouth, Nate. Yes, I am. Okay, so um, yeah, so you can go. It, it's good to get a male perspective on how men are because sometimes you just don't understand. You know, women were emotional creatures. You know what I'm saying? But you can just go to your father for some stuff. You can't go to your mom for. So if it's anything of that nature, it's cool having a dad that you can just call. Hey, so let me tell you about this guy. Do you think he should have done that, or should I drop him like a bad habit? Yep. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's good. You were right about the spoil part because you are spoiled. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, it is. So how important are father's words to his children? Very important. I'm going to give you this example. So, and this may seem so bad. So this is when my dad wasn't, this is when we weren't really getting along. He wasn't really the nicest person to me. Um, so I was extremely, I was more overweight when I was younger. Um, and I had a lot of insecurity issues. And this was around, I want to say like the beginning of high school. So um, my parents, my dad made sure we went to private school our entire lives. And then when we transitioned over to public school, you know, kids are really different. You know what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> they, they are, they're not, the, they, they're not that nice. Um, so I, I really got joked about my weight. And I remember in particular, I came home from school one day and I was crying and I was upset because of me being joked because of my weight issue. So my dad, he was always in the gym and all of this type of stuff. And I came home, he was like, what's going on? And I said, I told him, I was like, you know, I keep getting joked in school because of my weight and I just feel self-conscious. I don't feel, I don't feel pretty. So he tells me, he says, well, you, maybe you should just need to lose weight then. Mm. And I said, okay. Um, okay. And then I went in my room and I cried even more. So the words of your father, just think if things would have been changed or how he said that yeah. in the moment. What if it would have been a, you know what? It doesn't matter what size you are. You are beautiful how you are. And don't yeah. let anybody tell you otherwise, whether if you, because you can lose weight and still have insecurity issues, I'm a witness. But it's like, what if words were changed? You know what I'm saying? That affirmation yeah. would have helped me not be so self-conscious to this day because, you know, I still see myself sometimes, even though I'm in the gym and I'm, I lost all this weight and, you know, I'm looking good or whatever. I still have a lot of those moments where it's just like, man, I feel like I was that little girl when I was younger and those words still play in my head, even though I still love him, I'm not bitter. I'm not angry or anything, but those words stick with you for the rest of your life. To be quite honest, even in the most healed states, it will be something that comes that kind of triggers that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So your words of affirmation to your daughter, just telling her how beautiful she is, telling her how amazing she is, how successful you're going to be just really pouring into her because those are seeds at the end of the day. And the Bible does say that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And that's real. That seems so cliche, but that scripture is so yes. real. And you are planting seeds into your child. And we sometimes think that it's just in the moment, but those words will affect you when you're older. I'm 32 yeah. and I still hear those things and feel this and still being healed, even with, um, being even with being okay with him and him being my mm -hmm. best friend, I'm still being healed internally from that stuff. So those words of affirmation to your daughter. And here's another example. Um, Shante, David and David and Tay, how they really, I see them being so intentional with Reese and how they really pour into her and tell her how gorgeous and how beautiful she is. And I don't care what anybody else says. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. You are a princess. And she literally walks around like, yeah. I'm the best thing in the world. 
and how pretty. <laughs> That's how a little girl at her age yeah. at eight years old should be. It should be, I am the most beautiful girl in the world. I don't yeah. care if anybody do joke me. And then, but when she gets older, I don't think they really understand the amazing seeds that they have poured into her because that's going to affect her confidence. Even mm -hmm. if she feels like she can't get into a college, it's going to be like, no, I can have whatever I want. That little stuff helps. I don't think people really understand that. And parents that cuss at their kids, stop doing yeah. that. That's another thing I see a whole lot. I see a lot of parents cussing at their children, calling them names. Your words, especially dads, your words mean everything to us. And we need that. We're still, even though we're grown, we're still little girls. Yeah. At the end of the day. And that's like you said, probably a good point with the scripture. It says death and life is in the power of the tongue. If we go to Amplified Version, when you go um, after that verse, it says a man's, a man's life must be, a, must be the, how does it go? Um, his words, his his, the consequence of his words must be fulfilled. So what what you say, it had the seed has to, will sprout up. Yeah, will sprout up, and it must sprout because of your words. And that's just like what you said about how it's affecting you now. That shows how much I said before how a father's words goes into the future. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Children. So it's not it's not like if you think it's a. <laughs> them now wait until they get older wait until it goes down the road wait until they get into their future those words are going to sprout up because it's a seed so as they as the children grow that seed grows with them if yeah. you don't change it because it's like a weed growing in a garden we got yeah. a weed growing with your flowers if you don't till that garden and take that weed out it's going to keep growing and it's going to choke the flower and it's going to kill the flowers yeah Same way with the father's words with his children if you don't change what you say to your children as they get older and you don't fix that word that you spoke until when they were younger, then that word is going to choke them and choke their future yes. and choke their destiny as they get older. And we as fathers, we have to understand that. And I know I say this all the time. Every day when I drop Caleb off from school, I tell him, you're a great, you're a champion, you can do yes. anything, and Jesus loves you. Now, now, I say, I say, what are you? He said, I'm great. Yes. Said, he said, I'm a champion. So what can you do? He said, anything. I said, who loves you? He says, Jesus. I said, be great today. When he come home from school, I said, how was your day? He said, it was great. I said, what did you do today? He said, I was great. I, I'm putting that word in him. Yes. So now when he gets old, like you said, with David, with Reese and with Sean and, and the kids, when they grow up, because they're putting it in there, Reese is going to grow up. And no man, not just any man, is going to be a step to her. At you know, all. No man is going to be able to verbally abuse her and tell her she don't look good. And she Because her daddy told her that she was beautiful all right. her life. Yes. So, and just imagine if Dave didn't say that. Yeah. If, if he wasn't present, he didn't say it, then she'll grow up insecure. Yeah. So that's why it's important. The father's words are so important because I know I keep saying they go into the future of the children. They follow the children in their life and it's growing up with them as they grow. So oh, when Caleb really? grows up, all he's going to hear is, I'm great. Yes. Champion. I could do anything. And he's going to be doing it because I'm going to tell him that every day of his life. As yeah. long as I'm on this earth, I'm going to tell him that. And he's going to grow up and he's going to know it. So there's nothing that he's going to Think he can't do because he know my daddy said I can do anything. Yes, and that's, Ooh, that's so important. Good. You know the fathers, guys, your words are important to your children. So, what do you feel is the best way a father can impact his daughter? What is the best way a father can impact his daughter? Being there. Okay. Being present. Um. Being present at, at everything is very important. Um, those little things, it's not even nothing really big or deep. It's crazy because as kids, we don't ask for a whole lot. Of course, when we're younger, um, we may ask for like a PlayStation or something like that. But as far as an intimate part of a kid, we ask nothing but for time and mm -hmm. Um, to be there for us, whether if it's coming to a recital, whether if it's coming to um, to a game. I don't know, whatever 
that certain thing is. I think the best way to impact a child is to be present. Um, and to know that I don't care whatever happens to you. I am always there for you. And I will always be a supporter of whatever you do. That is something that I wanted when I was younger. And um, that's all kids really ask for is for you to be present. That makes a lot of impact. On it, your life. It, just, it just gives a sense of security that I don't care what happens. I know that daddy's going to be there. I know that mommy's going to be there. And when you're not present, it just makes the security factor go down. You don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And every child wants to feel safe. Every child wants to feel secure. It's just, it's really not, I, I don't think people realize, like, for instance, on reality TV, there's been some instances. I watch Love and Hip Hop sometimes. There's this instance where it's this guy um, named Scrap on TV. He ended up um, meeting his father after all these years. And when he met his dad, the thing he said, man, where were you? I really needed you and your time. He said that would have been the most thing that would have impacted my life is your time and for you being there. We don't ask for a lot. And I'm going to keep saying that kids do not ask for a lot. But your time is one of the most impactful things that can change our lives in every single area and to make us feel safe. And that's good because even now as an adult, um, when I was growing up, and I was in the band. I played baseball. You know, all the other kids had their dads coming to the game. Yeah. Um, we got dropped off to college. They had their dads coming to the college game, coming to visit them at college, picking them up from school and stuff like that. And I, I would always be there and just like, man, I wish, you know, I had a dad. My mom couldn't come because financially she couldn't make it. But I had nobody that 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 there that could be there for me, you know, and then. But some of my friends, um, their family took me in. Like my, my friend Theo, his, his parents took me in as 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 a child, as one of as like their child. Yeah. So whenever they came to see him at the games, they grabbed me. Oh so wow! It was like so whenever you know it was always whenever he went home after band practice to get something to eat or something on the weekends, it was like yo, is that coming? You know, it's Nat coming because they call me Nat. It's Nat coming, you know, um, and I, I was invited over there. Like, you know, you can come on anytime. And so those things help, but it still wasn't the same feeling yes. as having that father. Even now, like my godfather who raised me um, was my previous pastor when I was growing up. Um, even now, to, on my wedding day, um, I wished I had a father there, you know, because yeah. I just wish that. I had somebody there to speak, you know, yeah. my dad there to speak. And my godfather, who, who's like the only father I know, he was sick, so he couldn't come. Mm. So it had it impacted me um, that day. But it, it was like, you know, it was nothing I could do about it. But it was like, as that grown man, I still wish I had dad there. Even now, sometimes to this day, when I when I'm thinking about things, you know, and decisions I need to make in family stuff. Um, I wish I had a dad there to speak wow. to me, give me some time when you know, it's time to discipline Caleb on certain instances. And I don't, don't know how to do it. You know, you want that really? dad you can talk to and get yes. that advice. But it's, it's important. Uh, guys, even as grown men, as your kids get older and you don't give them the time, they're going to still want the time. They're going to still need that time. And I, I, I firmly believe even there's some men out there now who haven't been in the life of their children, which is what we want to do, which is the, what this is designed to do. Yeah. They still go back in the, the lives of children because their children still want that time. And it's just, even if they're grown, they could still use, uh, benefit from that time of their father. Yes. You know, if it's, even if it's just a, Hey, I'm sorry, I want to start over. Um, Things like that, um, you know, what you, you got anything you want to talk about, uh, stuff like just being there as a listening ear. Even if you don't know what advice to give, a listening ear will help um, that child. That's so real. It's so impactful. It's very impactful. Yeah, it is. We have that. It is, even with adults. So let me ask you, um, what's, what's one piece of advice you would like to give to fathers out there? To, to be present. 
And I just, I just really feel that in my spirit, in my heart, that fathers aren't really that present, mm -hmm. um, especially nowadays. It's a lot of distractions and a lot of stuff. Um, social media. There's a lot of things that distract us. But one of the things that I can say is I just want to tell you dads that we need you. Your role in the household, your role as a man, I'm not going to cry. Um, your role in our lives is just is so important. And we need you. We need you for now. We need you for future. We need you for forever until the father calls you home. We need you. We need you. I don't think um, you're almost like a mirror of Jesus to us. Um, you're, of course, you're not God. You're not perfect. But that's how we see you. We see you as the superhero that can save our lives um, when things go wrong. And when we don't have that sense of security, it affects every single area of our lives, specifically decision making with certain things and certain relationships and all that type of stuff. I know it definitely affected me. So I would say, be please be intentional and be more present when you think that you're really spending time with your child and giving stuff, things is not time. Sending right. money is not time. Um, anybody, any man can send me money and do whatever he wants for me. But the quality time with us is what we need. Those talks when we're crying is what we need. Um, we need that sense of, uh, sense of security. So I would say, dads, please take time. I don't care if it is a baby mama situation. You be intentional about going to go get that child and to be just there for them. And I really, really feel that that fathers are, not all of them, but certain fathers are just not present. And your money is not enough. Your gifts are not enough. But your time and your presence is what we really, really need. That's all we ask for as kids is we want your time. In your 30s, 40s, 50s, we want our dads to be present as, present as little girls because we really, really do need you. That's good. That's good. Sis, thank you for yeah. coming on tonight. Thank you for being good. Uh, <laughs> you ain't even let me be ratchet. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> I appreciate you. Ain't even you. Let me. I'm sitting here being all serious about the tear up and stuff, Nate. You about to make me real vulnerable in front of everybody. Cut that mess out. I really want to say another word. <laughs> you know what? Girl, love you. Appreciate you for coming I on. I love you. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right, and I will talk to you, as always, tomorrow. I'll FaceTime you right after. All right. Love All you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in tonight. That was my buddy, my friend, my little sister, Gina. She gave some good advice, and that's the biggest thing is time, guys. Biggest thing is time. Spend time with your children, whether it's 15 minutes, whether it's 30 minutes, Talk to them on the phone. Try to get some time. If you're in a baby mama situation, there's ways around that. You got legal rights. Um, I think maybe I may do an um, interview with somebody one day with a lawyer about how get dads can get legal, um, your legal rights for your child. But thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we are going to be back next week. Again, you guys, if you have any questions, if you want to email us, if you want to talk to us, if you want to ask us questions, you can go to our website at keenrelationships.org and you can email us at krelationships at gmail.com and we will be back next week. Next week, I have another um, daughter that's going to be on. My friend Radonna Boyd is going to be on next week. Um, guys, thank you for tuning in tonight. Love you. Look forward to seeing you next time. Again, check us out on the website, keenrelationships.org. All right, be victorious.